All right, uh, this is the first instructional video relating to LIDAR. Uh, this would be workshop week three. What I've done right now is I want to just introduce components of a LIDAR uh, resource. And in this case, what we've done is I've downloaded four tiles of LAS point cloud data from uh, the Pennsylvania State Geospatial Portal well, in fact, really, these were downloaded through the Earth Explorer, but as you can see, it came originally from that data um, repository. And what I want to do is look a little bit at these uh, data sets so that you understand what you should be looking for in your own data. Um, what you'll notice here is I'm in, first, this is in our catalog. But what I also want to open up is we're going to look at, in the desktop, the same file so that you'll see a little bit of a difference here. And so here's the same folder. Um, you'll notice that when they download, uh, typically they're going to come down as zip files. Uh, one thing I would caution you against is the LAZ files are a compressed file format, but they are zipped in such a manner that the standard Windows extraction won't work. You'll need something that will extract TarGZ files. And so if possible, I often will, in fact, download LAS files even though they are larger in terms of their download. But let's look at what is in one of these files once it's extracted. You'll notice that there is, in fact, uh, the LAS file, the .LAS file, and that's, in fact, the raw, or, well, the, the point cloud data. And in, in terms of ARC and ARC Pro, that's not a format that can be read directly into the software. In addition, there is a uh, XML file which describes the uh, metadata of the LAS file. I'm going to close that now and I want to look at the information here. You'll notice when we're in our catalog the, only the XML file is visible and again that's because that LAS file can't be previewed. In other words it can't be uh, looked at in this environment. Okay and so what we're going to look at now is the metadata format. And again, I could make this so it would open up a little bit easier in there, but I, I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. A couple of things, though, that I would like to point out. When we're dealing with LiDAR data, we do need to look at our vertical datum. Unlike most of our feature classes and shapefiles that are, in a sense, two-dimensional, LiDAR data does have a, th a third dimension, and we need to make sure that we have that vertical datum set. In this case, we're looking at NAV D88, so the North American Vertical Datum of 1988. Our map projection, though, in other words, our X and Y system here, it is projected, and this happens to be in NAD83, State Plain, Pennsylvania South, FIPS feet. Okay, so again, those are really important to know that our X and Y are in feet, and it's State Plain South. When we're dealing with LiDAR data, it's really important to make sure that you have your datums correct. All right, so now the next step, we've got those two pieces in our head. Um, what I need to do next is, in fact, in my folder, I'm going to create a new LAS data set. The new LAS data set is going to allow us to, in fact, interact with the LiDAR point cloud files. So I'm going to add that data set right now, and in this case I'm simply going to call it Pittsburgh. That's what we're actually going to be looking at. And when we now have that, you'll notice I'm going to go to its properties, and what you'll notice here is there's, in a sense, nothing in it. It's what I've called it. And what I'm going to do now is add files. That's the first step. So in dealing with LiDAR point cloud data in the ARC environment, we need to first create a LAS data set and you can do that in our catalog that's typically the best way to do it um, and it resides outside of your file geodatabase but it should always be built within a folder in other words you don't want one of these just hanging out by itself now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add files to this so I'm going to click on add and the important thing to note is that in this case, what I want to add, I'll go to Bill here, and I'm going to actually put in all four of these. One. These all are in different folders. 
And so we're going to add each one of these. You know, each of these is an LAS file. Now, once I've done this, I'm going to click Apply. And for me, the next step that I would do is run statistics. Now, I do want to point out that I could add surface constraints, such as break line files, polygons, etc. Um, you'll notice here that missing feature classes and feature classes can be added here. But in the next step, You'll notice my statistics are not run. I need to do that next. So I'm going to click Calculate here. And the system will process each of those four files. And now a couple things um, are very important about this. First of all, when I look at this, I'm interested always to see what are my returns. First, and you'll notice they're all there. And then in this data set, in terms of classification, I have unassigned ground, number eight, which is their model key. I do have water, and I do have overlap, and I have transmission towers. The other thing that is worth looking at on here is the range of variation in some of these values. Now, you'll notice that in this case, our, our minimum is 701, and our maximum is 1695. Let's suggest 900 feet of relief in this area. Okay, 900 feet of relief in this area. And again, that's certainly possible. But in some cases, you may look at this and say, well, all right, what are there any of these classes that have anomalous data? In other words, either very, very negative or extremely positive. And in a subsequent video, we'll talk about how to deal with those. Now, once this is done, I'm now going to go to my X and Y coordinates. You'll notice that this populated state plane south and our Z coordinate. Now we notice there is no vertical coordinate system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to set this because I do know that this used nav 88. That's what it was defined as and I'm going to apply that. So now we have most of our information. The last piece though that I want to look at in this, um, we're going to go back into its properties. And what I'd like you to note is the point spacing. Now, the point spacing is going to be in the native units. And so, again, because we're in state plane south feet, these units are the average point spacing within that data set. And so it's very important to understand what that point spacing is because that's what we're going to be using in order to produce our raster data sets. Okay? That's very, very important. Okay. So our point spacing, again, we're just keeping our head, that's about five, uh, five feet, five and a quarter feet, five and a half feet per. Okay? All right, so let's click on OK here. And now we have built our LAS data set. And if we look at it, this is in fact the footprint. When we look at the preview, we can kind of see the footprint. And each one of those is going to indicate where our raster data set is. And if we look at its description, again, in this case, because we haven't built any of this, none of, because it's a raster data set, it doesn't necessarily inherit the metadata and we would have to import that in. All right, but the first step is again building our LAS data set. We've done that now. We've looked at our point spacing. We're going to keep that in our head. We've set our horizontal and we've set our vertical datums, made sure that they are correct and that again they are projected. Okay, that's the first video and again we're going to stop there. We've built our LAS data set. We've looked at it. We've calculated its statistics. We're ready to move forward and work with it in the ArcMap environment. We'll look at that in video two.